Hello, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you how to do your own B12 injections at home. So if you missed the video that I did most recently, it's the last video that I uploaded, I was talking about the symptoms of B12 deficiency, how to know if you have it, and the best options to address the deficiency. And the best option in the video was dun -dun -dun, B12 injections, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So this is what you should, this is what you'll need. So you need the needles, obviously, and I have the B12 here. So I'm going to leave a link for you to buy your own B12 if you want to do it the same way that I'm doing. If you buy it, it comes in, so this is actually a little glass, this is a little glass vial. When you buy it, you have to add, so you're going to have to also go to the pharmacy where you're going to buy the needles that you're going to need. We'll talk about these in a minute. And you're also going to want to buy some saline. So just these little, little like vials of saline. So you're going to take the the B12 that you buy, it comes as a powder. When it's in the powder form, it's very stable. It doesn't, it doesn't break down very easily. It stays bioavailable for a very long time. When you add water to it, it becomes very unstable. So when you add the saline to it, it's gonna become fragile and you have to take care of it properly. And the best way you can do that is to make sure you do this, the lid up really tight and you wanna cover the outside in foil so that any light that comes is reflected off. B12 is very sensitive to light, and this is this is really important for actually why B12 is so important, because we're actually, your mitochondria work by basically creating light, like infrared, when you, when you exercise, you get hot. When you get hot, that's, that, that heat is infrared, uh, that's infrared light, you produce, you're basically a factory of light. So one of the ways your body moves energy around is by using a B12 molecule, because it can carry light. So this is actually really important, but, this means that it's very, very sensitive once you've added the liquid to it. So you wanna wrap it in foil like this so no light can get in. I should probably refoil mine because there's a little hole there. This is a very old bottle I've had for a very long time and it survived like two house moves. So it's, uh, it's getting, a, getting a little old, but yeah, just make sure you do it up tight and put the foil on the outside. So you kinda wanna get this, you add the appropriate amount of saline in. I can't remember how much it is, but I'm gonna leave a link to a thing um, after this video. I tried to leave it already, but I couldn't. So I'm gonna leave it in the description after I finish the video take you to a website where you can find it and, it and it walks you through the exact steps and I'm just giving you like a brief summary of them here. So you'll this this will arrive, you wanna wrap it in foil straight away, add your saline to it, and then you also wanna get some needles. So I've got some needles here. These are, you would think that this may be a bit challenging to get, they're very easy to get. You can usually get them online or you can get them at most pharmacies. So these are basically just insulin syringes. So these are, as you can see, you've got a zero to 30. So these are three, Three millimeter, three milliliter, point three milliliter. They're tiny. You can see they're really, really thin. You don't need very much. So your dose is going to be individualized to you. You can find out more on the website that I'm going to send you a link to as to what you want to do. But generally, the rule of thumb is with B12 injections, doing smaller doses more frequently is better than doing big doses periodically. When you do a big dose, your body gets flooded and it flushes a lot of it out in your urine. So it's a water soluble vitamin, which means it's, it's, it's quite safe. There's actually no upper limit of tolerance for methylcobalamin, which is what I said. So it's better to do more frequent, like daily or every second day or every third day than doing like four big injections a month or like one really big injection every three months or something. And that's kind of the way you get it in the mainstream healthcare. It's better to do smaller doses more frequently because you're going to get a higher, a higher uptake from it. So this is actually a really easy process. I'm not sure how best to show you me doing the actual thing. So first of all, with the needle, so you, it's usually got two covers. You've got the pointy end, don't poke yourself with this, and this stops you from detonating the plunger. So you basically take this off, push the plunger all the way down to squeeze out any extra air, take the needle off the top, and you've got the little tiny needle here, you see, really, really tiny. If you do this properly, it probably won't even hurt. There are, there are certain areas of your skin that it's more painful than others. Everybody's different. Figure out where your nerves are in your skin and do it in an area where it doesn't hurt for you. I'm gonna do it in my belly, so that's the I found that's the best place to do it. So you're gonna to to get your B12 open. I'm basically just, I'm gonna do this off camera. I'm just doing this below the camera because I need a table. You're basically just gonna to wanna to put this in to the, into the jar deep enough that the needle is in the liquid, but the syringe isn't. And then you're gonna pull up to however much you need to get. So I usually go for between the, the 10 and 15 mark here. So let me just do that, just give me a second. So you also wanna make sure that when your thing is getting low, you don't wanna poke the needle into something because you'll blunt the end. Even a very light poke, 
reduces the sharpness significantly and it's going to make it hurt a lot more getting it in and out. So if you accidentally poke it on something like inside the jar, get it again and also you want to follow good needle hygiene. So if you poke it on like your hand or something, just don't use it. Throw the, throw the needle away, get a different one. So let me just fill this up. This, this does take a little bit of focus. So you're going to have to give me a second here because I want to do it properly. It's also quite hard when the amount that you have is starting to, to get low because it's hard to figure out where, where it actually is. Okay, so now it looks like this. You see there's a little bit of air here. This is quite common. All you're going to want to do is, so first of all, I'm, so I'm still holding this. I'm doing this with one hand. I'm putting the lid back on the B12 because I want to expose it to the light as little as possible. So it's important to do that. So I'm just get that done up tight. And now I find it's very, it works very well to hold it at the base here and flick just where you've got the little, the little air bubble here. So you can just flick it like this and the little air bubble will, will float to the top. Now you, can, you should be able to see the air bubble is at the top. So then you can basically just squeeze it a little bit. There's a tiny little amount of fluid that's stuck in the needle. So you can just squeeze it and a little bit of fluid will come out. But then it's mostly just going to be air coming out until you get all of the air out and it starts to flow out with the B12 again. And you see it's very easy to see because it's very red. And this red color, you'll, you'll notice, is, is very vivid. So you just tap that off on a, on, a, on a kitchen roll or a toilet paper or something like that. So there we have it. So there's no air left in there anymore. Actually, there is a very small air bubble just on this side. So I'm just going to get this one out as well. So you just want to try and make sure you get all the air out. Even if there's a small amount of air, it's, it's actually kind of safer than it would usually be because we're doing this into the, the body fat, not into the muscle and not into a vein. So even if there is a little bit of air, as far as I'm aware, I'm not a nurse, so don't take my word on it. It's not as dangerous as if it was going into a muscle or into a uh, into a vein. So get all the air bubbles out. It's really important. It's, it's, it's very easy to do. And then you're going to want to look. You probably can't see on this camera, but the needle is, is poking one way. I find that it's easiest to try and aim that going into you first. So you can get it in very easily. So I'm actually going to show you me doing this, if I can figure out how to set up a camera. So I'm going to get my belly out, and I'm going to show you where I like to do it. So this is, I'm just showing you this because it's so easy, you know, and I know it sounds kind of scary, but this has really helped me, and this can really help a lot of other people, so I just want you to know how easy this is to do. So as you can see, mixed it up, got it into the needle, all very quick, very easy. So let me just figure out how to do this. And I can turn this without putting the needle down. You don't really want to put the needle down once you've once you've um, loaded it up because just you don't want to contaminate it with anything. So you have to be really careful. So I've got my belly here. All you do is just pinch. Your, so you're going into the fat. So you're gonna you don't want to poke it straight into you like this. You want to kind of go at an angle. Especially so when I started doing this, I, I didn't have any body. I mean, you can see I've got a nice chunky belly now. Before I didn't have any belly fat. So if you don't have much fat, you want to squeeze your belly like this to the side. So you can get a little bit of belly fat protruding out and you're just going to poke it in and, and inject it. I don't really need to squeeze it anymore, so I just use it to stabilize. And I find that this area of my belly at the bottom is very sensitive. This area is also very sensitive. If I do it right in the middle, I usually don't even feel it. So just give me a second. There's always a bit of hesitation around poking a needle into yourself because it hurts. But after you do it a few times, you kind of get used to it. So I'm just going to make sure I'm holding it here so I've got a good grip because I'm going to be doing this all with one hand. You just squeeze it up, poke it in. I literally can't even feel it. And just squeeze the plunger down. You want to do this very slowly. And then just pull it out slowly. Just like that. Super easy. As soon as you're done, put the cap back on. Make sure you don't poke yourself. So safety first, you know, make sure that you make sure you put the cap back on so no one gets hurt. And I also like to put the thing on the back here. If you do this frequently, probably get a sharps container so you can dispose of this properly. Um, otherwise, like taking two pharmacy or oh no, dispose of your needles properly. Uh, be, be careful with what you do. Definitely don't put them like if you're gonna throw them in the bin, don't throw them in the bin with the thing off. That's just silly. Don't do that. So if you, if you feel the, the need to, you can sanitize the area on top of where you did, so you can get like an alcohol wipe or alcohol gel or something, sanitize it. I mean, I don't do it. I don't, I've never done it. I've, I've always been fine. I've never had a problem. So it's such a tiny hole, it probably heals itself up in like half a second anyway. But yeah, if you're concerned about infection and stuff from penetrating skin, use an alcohol wipe or something, especially if you're in an unsanitary environment. But yeah, that's basically it. So it's super easy. Don't hesitate on doing it if you're 
concerned, it's so easy. I'm gonna leave a link so that you can get your own solution and do this yourself. So that's everything for me today. Hope it's been really helpful and I'll see you soon. Ciao.